I totally agree with you. And, but it also, it also is testament to your um, willingness to get involved, get stuck in and, and show up, you know, and, and that's clearly a trait that you've had for a long time. And I think it's always a two way street, isn't it? But we are lucky. And I think people are willing to, to allow, you know, allow you into that inner circle, which is special, especially with, like you were saying with that Mr. Kido, you know, like must've been felt pretty privileged to be in that space with him. But how, how important are, or is having a role model and mentors in your opinion? I think it's huge. I think, I th- yeah, I just think it's massive. And, and not, not that you know it at the time when you're younger, um, but you do have people that are going to really shape your future and see the good in you and want to help you out. And I, I think for me, I know for me in particular, like if I look back on my life, I've had so many good mentors. Um, and I don't know if it's because for some reason I was seeking them and that we found each other somehow, but I just feel super fortunate that I've had it. But but also what I've become conscious of is as an older adult now is to carry on seeking these people uh, because it doesn't matter what level you are at in your life. If you're the president of a country or whatever, there's always going to be somebody who inspires you and who you look up to. And it's important to follow these people because they're going to, they're going to do things that you're going to want to do and push you and, and, you know, they might be just role models. And so, so basically you just look up to them and don't necessarily have like a direct relationship with them. But then from the mentor side of things, I think it's important to actually go and seek these people and ask them. I even, I even remember like quite a few times um, in my, my banking career and um, also like on, from a social side of things, I, I've actually asked people if they would mentor me. I'm like, you know, do you mind mentoring me? Because I really like, I really connect with you and um, I know that you'll be able to teach me sort of things. And every single person generally says yes. And I think it's, it's a human thing. Like humans, no matter what you might see in the news and all these sort of things, we're, we're actually really are wired to help each other. Mm-hmm. And, and that's actually what we are about. Like, you know, people love to help each other out. And, um, and if you ask somebody to, to mentor you and to guide you, I can promise you that probably 95% of the time they'll go, yeah, yes, of course. I'd, I'd be proud to, I'd, I'd love mm. to help you out. No, it's brilliant. Like, uh, whenever I hear you talking, uh, talk about banking and uh, I know you, you still light up a little bit, you know, because you were there for so long. It's, it's just interesting to see, you know, it's still shaped you, as you said, and, uh, and you've got so much knowledge about it. I'm always like really enthralled when I'm listening to you and you talk about banking and you, you've told me so much about this machine, you know, that, that's sometimes very slow moving and archaic, but sometimes at the, the front edge of things, it's just really, really fascinating. So um, I'm sure there's a book in there one day about the banking industry, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you actually ended up, um, you left banking for a bit, then you went back and then you left permanently ultimately. Um, and what, what sort of made you make the change and move away? And, and off the back of that, did you get a bit of pushback? Oh, interesting. Good question. So uh, I always, I don't know what it was, Craig, even though I loved it, there was always something else inside me. I just didn't feel like this is, was what Gareth had to offer the world. I was like, mm. you know, even though it taught me so much, um, I just felt like there was, there was a void somewhere in my life and I wasn't providing the value that I, that I thought I, I probably could. And the first, I remember we had worked on this crazy project. Like I've, I've, I've actually probably never really worked that hard in my life. Like it was, it was obvious had just bought, um, AB and Amro. It was the biggest, and I think still is to this day, like the biggest financial merger in, in history. It was like 75 mm-hmm. billion dollars or pounds or something. It was huge. Wow. Right. So the project was long. It was like two, three year project to, to break this bank up into different things and put, put a new whole new bank together and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it kind of wore me out a little bit. Like the hours were incredible. It was really stressful. 
And, and eventually I said to my boss, this lady, Nicole, also a great lady. And I said, uh, yeah, I, I really would like to take a sabbatical um, uh, once everything is finished. And she was like, cool, no worries. And um, I, I took a six and a half month sabbatical and it was like, that's when my eyes really got opened. And I spent pretty much most of that time in South America. And I met these like amazing people. And it's, yeah, it, uh, they were like doing all these cool things around the world, you know, like working from their laptops and, and doing things on the internet and stuff. And I was like, wow, I was like, wow, that's because I was like, so like in the zone with just banking and stuff. I'd done it for like at that stage, probably, I don't know, 13 years or something like that. And I just thought that was it, you know, like this is the world, the world's all around that. And is, you know, that's where you want to be if you want to be doing cool things is in like say banking. But then I met all these other people and then I started seeing more of the world. I'd already done a lot of traveling, you know, up until then, but I started seeing like really cool things. And I started remembering that I really loved nature and being outside and I love being around people and meeting people. Like it was for me, that was like such a big part of it. Like it was about seeing all these people and making these new friendships and I went back to, to banking, like you said. So, so that, that's what got it. That's what it got it going. And I was like, mm-hmm. but I was like, I'm going to go back to banking and now I'm like refreshed and energized and I'm going to hit it. And I'm like, you know, going to make a name for myself and blah, blah. And then honestly, two weeks after I was back, I was like, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. And I just knew it. I just like, I, I need to, I need to get out and do something else. And mm-hmm. Like you said, there was uh, I, I did leave and I left, but I left and I had no plan really. But I just I kind of thought I was going to do something, and I did mm. some studying or like around app development because I thought I was going to get into that because that was the thing to do. And I just kind of messed around a little bit, and eventually, I actually went back into banking for for another three years. Um, wow. but I went back as a, as a consultant. So it, my setup was a little bit different. I wasn't like a permanent employee. Um, so I was able to go to like a few different places and I was able to save a bit more cash than normal. And, but at the same, but then I was like, okay, you have to have a plan. And for those three years I worked on, I worked on what I wanted to do. Um, and I thought I, I knew what I was going to do at the end of those three years. Um, but I'd been going on courses and meetups and whatever and just kind of find reading books and listening to podcasts and all these sort of things and yeah and then eventually after those uh, those three years in it I was like okay I know what I want to do or I thought I knew what I wanted to do and mm. but I, w- and I, I wasn't enjoying the banking anymore the the, the banking had changed a, a fair bit the industry became I don't know. It just became weird. It was too regulated in terms of the only projects you were working on were, were, were regulatory, which, um, which were boring to be honest with you. And also mm-hmm. the banking industry was like shrinking and you, you never kind of felt safe in your environment uh, or your, your job was safe. And everyone felt like that. No one was enjoying it. Like it wasn't fun to go into the bank anymore. And I, like, I, I couldn't deal with that because my mindset had shifted. I couldn't deal with, mm. with like going into a place where it, it wasn't a growth mindset. Everybody was like hating it and they wanted to do something else, something else. And, but most of them would never cause they just talk about it. Mm. And I knew that I had to make a, a clean break from it so that I could get into a different headspace and, go do what I actually wanted to do. And yeah. And that was a kind of start of all of that. That's awesome. And well done. It's a, it's a fascinating roller coaster, and, and it's amazing how, when you went back, how you, you just knew it just wasn't for you anymore, but it was actually on one of those. 